Josh Rogan, he's the author of Chaos Under Heaven. Uh, we just did a podcast together, I think a couple of three weeks ago. Uh, it is a must-watch podcast. Uh, it You will learn so much from uh, Josh. And he joins us again today. Uh, he is a columnist, and don't hold this against him, for the Washington Post. <laughs> Hi, Josh. How are you? Great to be back with you, Glenn. So I am, uh, you know, I'm wondering... Uh, well, first let's let's start with let's start with the simple stuff. The big winner here seems to be China. Uh, they are they are now looking to build new roads across parts of uh, of Afghanistan. They are looking at their their mineral mineral reserve, uh, which is enormous. Uh, their lithium reserve. Tell me about the big winner here in Afghanistan. Right, Glenn. Well, you know, there are lots of different angles to this debacle we're seeing unfold in Afghanistan, just a disaster for American credibility and standing all over the world. But and uh, I tried the way I look at it is that not everything in the world is related to China, but the ch- competition with China actually plays out all over the globe in every part of it, and especially in uh, Southwest Asia. And I think this really gives us gives China a, an advantage over us in Several, several different ways. First of all, let's just talk about the the the, the big picture, right? That the, Joe Biden, our president, internationalist president, was supposed to bring America back. He was supposed to be proving that democracies can defeat autocracies. He was supposed to be convincing the rest of our allies to come along on this project of building or restoring or repairing, whatever you like to call it, the international global world order, which is his entire plan for countering the rise of the Chinese Communist Party and the threat that it poses to our way of life. And boom, right out of the bat, he's losing democracies left and right. It's not just Afghanistan. Look at Myanmar. Look at Nicaragua. Look at, I don't know, uh, Tunisia. You know, all over the world in eight months, autocracy is on the march. And if you're in any country that's sort of on the border between sort of, you know, a struggling country that's trying to do better, that's trying to lift itself out of suffering and tyranny. And you look at that, you have to say that, like, oh, America walks, talks the talk, but doesn't walk the walk. And so that's the big, that's the big picture here, is that the big Chinese Communist Party argument has always been that democracy doesn't work, it's too messy, once you give people freedom, they use it to, you know, produce fake news, and all these things that we believe in like, uh, you know, human rights and the rule of law are all just sham. That's what Xi Jinping wrote in a a thing called Document Number 9, which is in my book, Chaos Under Heaven. It explains that his entire theory of the case is that the democracy and open and free societies don't work, okay? And that is much better just to have a thuggish dictatorship, even though you might not like what it does all the time. You'll have more stability and safety, and that's what we're proving by handing over this country to a thuggish dictatorship that doesn't even get you to the minerals and the diplomatic, you know, uh, 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 power that we've yielded to Beijing, and the fact that we throw our allies under the bus, and we abandon our local partners, and who around the world is going to want to work with us again, and who around the world is going to believe us again when we go into some place and say, hey, we can make your lives better, hmm. and uh, we're going to stick it out because we believe in these things that we profess to believe in, and but now China can go around the world and say, no, 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 that'll work for a little while until they get tired of you, and that's what they're saying to Israel and Taiwan and everyone else. So, Josh, um, you said that um, President Xi is is looking at uh, a world and saying autocracies work, uh, democracies don't. Well, I would posit to you that that is the belief of Joe Biden or at least those around him. As he said before to the press, um, uh, to the select press, the approved press, right before his, I guess you would call it a State of the Union speech, he said, you know, the jury's out on this. And that's our, that's, that's our quest, to find out if a democracy like ours can exist and, uh, and actually hold its own against these autocracies. And I honestly believe... He thinks that we can't. It's, I mean, it's the Great Reset. That is, that is the whole idea of Build Back Better, that you do have to take some of these rights away from people to be able to compete against China. This is exactly what we went through with the progressives in the 1920s and 1930s and 40s. Same thing. 
Well, listen, you know, I think there's there, there, there are similarities that you could draw, Glenn, but I think we should kind of avoid wrapping, uh, you know, our battle with tyranny at, at the Chinese Communist Party into our own domestic politics. You and I have talked about this a lot, right? We can, yes, there are uh, 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 through lines, right, about, you know, government power and our, our ability to affect, you know, uh, 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 and to speak freely in our own society. But it's not the same. We shouldn't draw. Well, I know. I'm not saying it is the same. I, I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm saying that their view of a, a free republic like we have constitutionally, that the left's idea of a free republic, uh, they don't necessarily believe in it either. Uh, you know, Xi Jinping, he is, you know, he's, 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 he's to the extreme of that, but they're on the same road. They don't think that we can compete. They think this is an old outdated model. You know, I think there is something to that. They, they, they you know, you, you can't just preach democracy. You have to actually implement it at home. And I do think that, you know, the way the Biden administration is going is that you have to conclude that they think that America is in decline and they're trying to manage that decline. Right. Now, what I say is that doesn't have to be the case. Now, if you're of the that's sort of how Obama thought of it, too. Right. He's like, oh, well, you know, it's just inevitable that these other countries are going to become so much more powerful than us. We should just manage our decline and hand off global responsibility. The problem with that, of course, is that when America withdraws, it's the bad guys who take over. It's like the worst actors, the strongest people, like the whoever is new at the zoo with all the guns and the money. In this case, the Taliban, who fills that void. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. I agree with what you're saying. But at the same time, it, it, that they, it's not over yet. Like, right. We have to fight against that, we have bo- both at home and abroad. Because if it is the same fight as you say, then, you know, we can't afford to lose either one. We can't afford to take our eye off either ball. Uh, I talked to Nigel Farage yesterday, and uh, we've talked to some people over uh, overseas in many different countries of our allies and they all pretty much say the same thing uh we don't we don't trust you anymore what what is the effect of that on on the average american citizen why should they care about that you know if joe biden came to power criticizing for alienating allies right that was his old pitch right america's alone America first means America alone. And here we are in the first eight months, and he's done as much to alienate allies as anyone else. And the reason that that affects all Americans, because if you're bought into this idea that, you know, America should, you know, uh, work with like minded countries on all these projects, well, then we actually have to do it. We actually have to uh, uh, put our money where our mouth is. And then if we can't get these countries on board, especially with regard to the China competition, well, then that's a big problem. If, you know, it's one thing to lose Afghanistan to China, it's another thing to lose Europe. And that's sort of what we're staring at, is that you've got all these countries that should be on our side. And by our side, and not, I don't mean America's side, I mean on the side of the things that we believe in, on the, the side of freedom and democracy in the West and yeah. free and open societies and justice right. and, you know, and, and human dignity, right, and, and, and individual rights, right, the same things that you're talking about in our domestic debate. You have pools of those people in all of these European countries, but, you know, if they're watching their own people uh, get killed in Afghanistan due to our incompetence, well, then the next time we go and ask them for help or tell them that they can trust us, of course they're not going to believe us. So, again, not everything is related to China, but it is, in a way, undermining our ability to do exactly what Biden said he wants to do. And that's really the big problem is that what they're saying and what we see on our TV screens are to- to- two totally different things. You can't really undermine trust more than that. I mean, I, we just spent three weeks. Even I mean, look at all the Democrats who are watching their TV screens, you know, calling everybody they know in the administration to beg them to get their – friends and family out of the, uh, this crazy, ugly, dystopian situation and failing because the State Department and the Biden administration was so discobulated, so screwed up, just a mess. That's what I saw for the last 19 days, a total disaster, the avoidable disaster, predictable disaster where real people died because of the incompetence, not ideology, it's just the sheer incompetence of this administration. And that's what the world sees, too. So they could, they might even believe that Joe Biden believes what he says. But if they don't think he has the basic competence to pull it off, then why would they bet their countries on it? it wouldn't make any sense. I talked to somebody um, yesterday who um, was the chief of staff for a major allies um, uh, prime minister, and he happened to be friends of the prime minister of uh, I want to say it's Albania. I, I think I have that right, Albania. 
Um, last week when I was in the Middle East, Albania w- was taking uh, Christian ref- refugees. It's a great place for Christian refugees to go. Um, and uh, they had no problem taking it. The State Department called uh, the Albanian government and said, at the last minute, do not take any of these. And I asked, I asked this former aide who was speaking to the head of Albania, I think this prime minister, um, and I said, did he give you any indication on why that happened? And he said, no, he thought it was very bizarre, and so do I. And they wouldn't assign a a motive to it, but uh, that's not incompetence. What is that? Well, it's partially incompetence. But I've heard, first of all, Glenn, that's a horrible, horrible story. And that I've needs to be reported out and talked about, and I hope, and, and and so do I, and that's why I say it's a, it's it's shocking but not surprising because I've been dealing with stories like this for the last three weeks, like almost everybody else in Washington has, and they all go the same way. The State Department told us we were on our own, so we made we lifted heaven and, and earth to make arrangements to get our people out, and then the State Department screwed it up at the last minute. Yeah. And why is that going on? Because at in the middle of this mess. They start the administration continued to make bad decisions on top of bad decisions, and in the end, they were looking out for their political interests. And their political interests were to first of all make sure they don't get blamed for any of this stuff, which is not going to happen. And second of all, to get out the people that they cared about most. So when it when push came to shove, and they decided that they weren't going to extend the deadline again for no other reason than the political reason, uh, they immediately started to tell everyone, forget about your people, we're going to get our people, our locally employed staff, and um, also Americans and green card holders, but really only the Afghans that the State Department would wanted to be able to say, we saved these guys. And so everyone who had been working for two or three weeks to get their own friends and family out, equally deserving Afghans who had done equally heroic things, uh, they just got pushed aside because, uh, you know, that's the way that things were going. So yeah, it is a mix of political gamesmanship and a mix of incompetence uh, all rolled into one. It's a perfect storm of of idiocy uh, that has cost people's lives, lots of people's lives, and will continue to do so because of the thousands we left behind. I think um, it's the first time I've ever said this. I think calling um, uh, people idiots for this is the kindest (laughs) word uh, you could possibly use this Ju- is a family show and i'm no. trying to succeed. <laughs> uh, you know i know go ahead that you have very like, but but i heard what you said before i came on about you know american citizens and you know whether the numbers are right the numbers are all screwed up and you know they won't even tell you how they came to these 123,400 million whatever it's all bs but what's really insidious about that is that they want you to focus on the statistics so that you will be distracted from the stories from the anecdotes from the human suffering, right? Because I was dealing with American citizens who went through hell every day, walking up to those gates with all of the documentation, either getting turned away by the Taliban. If they get past the Taliban, they got turned away by the Turks. If they get past the Turks, they got turned away by U.S. Marines, okay? This happened many, many times. Many, many reporters have already reported it. So don't sit there and tell me you did everything you could, because the least you could have done was design a system that wasn't this totally, totally screwed up. Josh, thank you so much. Um, As always, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, He's the author of Chaos Under Heaven. Uh, He is probably, I think, the the leading voice on uh, China and where they're going and what it all means uh, and has a good head on his shoulders. Um, Columnist for The Washington Post, Chaos Under Heaven, Josh Rogan. Thank you so much, Josh.